Hey guys, Henning and Morton here from Flip Normals. And in today's video, we are going to go through some more Maya secret hidden tips yeah, and tricks. Yeah, a couple of little neat little things here which you may not know. So the first one is quite arbitrary. It is a double outliner. This is amazing. So okay, get ready, guys. <laughs> you just take your cursor down here and you drag up. Now you have two outliners. Ta-da! And you might think to yourself, oh, great, now I have two. <laughs> I only ever really want one. Until you see this. Um, this is like that one trick that doctors don't want you to know about. Yeah. Um, it's uh, particularly useful. Henning used it uh, quite a lot for rigging. Yeah. And you, if you have a lot of objects, the outliner could become a little clutter sometimes. And when you have to drag things back and forth, it's it could be a little annoying. So let's say you wanted to drag something from down here into like the top of your of your group. You like you do this, and it's like ah, oh, it takes forever. Yeah, this gets. I mean, with, in this case here, this this was a bit annoying because it took like ten seconds. Yeah. But if you have literally thousands of objects, like you're just not going to be able to do it. No. Like it's it's actually really really tricky to do. So here you could take the bottom part here, the bottom object, and just move it up. And now it's already on top. And this will just save you so much time. Second save. But also, you could, because they're they're independent, well, they're not completely independent. If you open a group, it'll be open on both of yeah. them. But let's say you wanted to focus on your lower outline to be this objects group two and the upper one to be objects group one. So you could just have these things so it's yeah. easier to sort of keep track of of a scene where you have a lot of objects in it. Particular use for like Morton said, like I've been using a fair bit for rigging, because then you just get you just get an insane amount of general attributes and nodes and whatever it is. So I, when I first saw this trick, that blew my mind a little, just because it's a <laughs> yeah. double outliner. Didn't really know what to use it for in the beginning, but it took a while. It, but it's super cool. <laughs> so the next one is the paint selection. So I can't remember if we've covered this before, but if you go to vertex mode and you hold down tab, you can sort of drag around on different verbs like this. This also works in uh, edge mode and poly yeah, yeah, mode as well. Mode. Uh, but over here, this is, I mean, I didn't use this until a couple months ago, actually. Just click the little brush icon over here, and now you can add to your paint selection. Now that's a radius. Or you can hold down control and you can subtract. Yeah, and if you just hold down B and drag to the sides, then you can increase your resolution or the, the radius of the brush, and then you have a bigger area mm. that you can select from. So. I mean, I, I've started using this now instead of the tab one because yeah. I can just, it's easier to select a lot of stuff with. Yeah. All right, tip number three is these uh, half moons over here. It's the attribute spread sheet. That's that's what we went with. So if you go to uh, window, window and general editor, and then we have general spreadsheet. There you go. So this is really useful if you have a lot of objects in your scene and you want to modify them all at the same time. Yeah. So you can do, for example, if we select all four of these, you can see they all get added to the list. And for these four right now, they, for example, they have double-sided turned on. But let's say, oh, in my viewport, I don't want that turned on. You can go to render and you go to double-sided and then you just hit zero. And now they're turned off in all of them. If you want to turn one, you just hit the one key as well. Yeah. So this is this is what I'm I'm using mostly the AdWords spreadsheet for is 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 render stats because I generally don't add a crazy amount of attributes to or change them in general. But for rendering, like you you might want a lot of them to not cast shadows, be visible in reflections and whatnot. Mm. So this is generally useful for particular rendering, but also just tons of stuff. If you want to add a transform to everything. This is this is your thing. This is one of these things. This is not a super sexy tip. <laughs> no, <it's> <laughs> this not. <laughs> is not like a whoa. But but this here will just save you a lot of time because you can just you can just add change attributes on a bunch of objects in like seconds. Yeah, I mean you can also do it individually. If you don't want this object here to cast yeah. shadows, you just say zero or right off. And yeah. if you hit the column, or is that a row? That's a column. Hit the column, <laughs> and then it'll select all of them. You can do that for, let's say you have an individual object, and you just want to turn everything off or on. Mm -hmm. You can do that here as well. Yeah. Um, it's kind of weird, but for the for the for this where you select multiple objects, this is this is how we usually yeah. use it. So. Yeah. All right. Tip number four. It's this beautiful, handsome guy in the background. It's for the two D zoom, and two D zoom. I guess if you've this is something you might be familiar with if you've ever done digi doubles or ever worked in production. That's that's how I got 
yeah. sort of familiar with it. It's if you have you know if you have your regular camera here and you zoom in. Obviously, this this camera now moves through space. That's why if you look at the sphere over here and you look at the grid, you start to see what's behind the yeah. behind the sphere because we're actually going through perspective. Uh, I'm gonna just go to our zoom cam here, and this this can do the same thing. You know, you zoom in and out, and it's great. But sometimes you don't want to manipulate your camera through no. space if you have uh, image planes set up for any sort of uh, photo shoot that you're matching anything yeah. to a reference. Yeah. That's where you want to use the 2D zoom. Because we use this a lot in VFX. Like you, yeah. you have a prop. Like this could be a camera, a human, or whatever. It doesn't matter. It's just that you have a bunch of cameras set up, and you just have to match this exactly. So you're not allowed to move the camera. Yeah, and some most of the time they're locked anyway. Yeah, exactly. So 2D zoom here is amazing. So two ways of activating 2D zoom, but the one you'll probably be using is the tilt the key on your keyboard. Now I don't know what kind of keyboard you're using, <laughs> but on my keyboard, it's to the right of the left shift button. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like it's like the the key that looks like it like it's like a slash like that kind of. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just above the the left Windows key. Yeah. So if you hit the tilde key, you see this little thing activated and see something happen in my viewport. Now I can hold down the tilde key and if I were to like sort of pan around, uh, hold down the uh, middle mouse button for me, I sort of drag it around. If I hold down the right mouse button at the same time, I can zoom in and out. But if you look at the grid here. I don't actually go past and mm. I don't start to see any sort of perspective changing because yeah. I'm not actually moving the camera. I'm just zooming in. Super, super useful. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's this, you have to have to use this tool. Yeah, if, if you are matching any kind of reference, like th this here is, is it, this here is not even optional. No. Like you're simply just not gonna be able to do the proper job without that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. It's, it has a very, very specific use. It's not a very sexy tip, <laughs> no. but it's uh, once it comes in handy, it really, it's really great. And you can just deactivate it by hitting the tilde key again or yeah. pressing the little button up there. Also a little plug for uh, Gavin Golden, who, who made the image here, oh, which cool. is uh, super nice. It's from uh, creating characters for games, yeah. which is a tutorial he made for us. Yes. It's it's thanks, good. Gavin. Pretty good tutorial. All right, for the last tip of the day, <sighs> An exciting plane. Oh yes! So uh, guys, get ready. <laughs> <laughs> this one we're going to talk about fall offs and different fall off modes for soft selection. Yeah. So oh, I thought I had a pre-selected edge. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just going to select these. There you go. So if we activate any sort of manipulator, right? We just go through space. B, the B key activates soft selection, and you hold down B key and like you drag out the brush, you activate a the radius of the soft select. Yeah. This radius, you can see, you can see the fall off of it. This can actually be manipulated. So if you double click on any of your uh, manipulators out here, come to soft selection. Um, let's cover that. You can see that currently we have this like curve to our soft select. Mm. So if I drag it up now, that's going to be represented in in our selection. Uh, the default one, I believe, is just this linear yeah. one. So you just drag this up, and you get a linear shape. Yeah. Uh, you can you can combine these into like super weird ones. <laughs> get some. Oh, okay. You can make stairs. Done. You can also make your own <laughs> custom ones as well. Yeah, yeah. Which is super, which is super super useful. To be honest, this is not something I do a whole lot. But this is this is one of these things. Once you need it, this is rather useful. Like like the pattern Morton is making now. Like I've never done that in my life, and yeah. I probably won't need to <laughs> because I would just model this properly. But um, but it, it's more what I use it mostly for is if you want to go between like linear or if you want to go between like a like a more soft way of doing that which has yeah, yeah. more of a curve but I definitely recommend experimenting with this with the general uh, the curve presets because you can do some crazy cool stuff for it. and if you guys figure out any any cool ways of actually using this for for something more creative than this yeah <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> let us know we'd love to see that as well and like as a last sort of bonus tip in the fall off mode here well in the in the fall offs for the soft select, mm -hmm. we have fall off modes. So by default, it's set to volumes. So you can see these peaks are pretty close together. So if I move this peak, I'll move the other peak as well. Mm. This might not always be desirable. So if you just come over to volume and hit surface instead, it'll respect the surface. Yeah. And you can start moving this without moving the peak that. This is amazing if you're doing something like your lips or fingers or mm, something like where yeah. stuff is close together. Uh, you definitely need to use the fall off mode, changes the surface to from surface to volume. 
All right. These were all the tips we have for you today. Yeah. So no, thank you no more secret tips. <laughs> no, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.